Hey, what's up everybody? It's iWooshock again with another quick video in my series on modifiers. The things that make you just better at what you do. Last time I talked about modifiers that help you deal more damage as a DPS, and so today I'm looking at modifiers which help you take less damage. And sometimes deal it back out. I'm talking about defensive modifiers. The first bonus is super straightforward, health. If you're a bait tank, you want the least amount of health on your team and still be able to survive. As a tank, you want as much health as you can get. The health bonus adds a percentage to your health. And it's important to discern the difference between stamina and health because stamina is a function of how you get health, but health itself is a separate value. Evade is super popular, um, especially right now. It was meta in T17 and 18, kind of lost some of its luster in T19 with augments, but it just negates all damage. You can still proc your when you're hit pets or any other action that happens when you are hit, but you take no damage. The maximum evade you can have is 75%. Once you go over that, it just doesn't count, so don't overstack it. Block, on the other hand, its cap is at 100%, and what it does is when it procs, you just take half damage. It's really easy to get to 100% block, especially with some of our more recent accessories that have popped in the game, but it's generally what your tanks are gonna stack up first, because you wanna get as much block and then have extra mitigation as well. The motto for deflect is, I am rubber, you are glue. Whatever you send to me bounces off and sticks to you. Anything that you get hit with, if deflect happens, gets sent right back. You take no damage, the person that hit you takes the damage. DPS players can definitely kill themselves if they hit you with this, but it's kind of hard to stack a lot of deflect. Familiars are really great ways to use deflect, and it's, a, it's actually a really good strategy to get through some of the harder flags. Now, redirect is kind of the bread and butter of tanks and some baits. The point of a tank is to make sure your DPS lives, and in order for your DPS to live, they need to take less damage. So if they're about to get hit and you proc redirect, you get hit instead. And this happens before any other defensive modifiers could possibly get procced, so all of your mitigation happens on that hit as well. Shielding is really similar to health in that it lets you just take more damage. It adds to your health pool. It caps at 50% of your base HP, um, unless you have like a set item or certain mythics that will increase that, but it just gives you extra pools of health. So if you happen to have 1000 HP, you can also have an additional 500 HP in shield on top of that. Absorb kind of turns you into that slime that in Dungeons and Dragons, you hit it with a sword and it absorbs the sword and gets stronger. Any damage that you would have taken gets turned into shielding for you it's, as well. Um, you do still have to follow the cap for shielding, but this does essentially double any mitigation that you have. Damage reduction used to be the meta. It was the one thing that you wanted to have, and now it's not quite as effective. Um, it just takes a percentage of the damage and lowers the damage by that amount. It caps at 75%, but if you were going to take 100 damage and you had 75 damage reduction, it would mean that you take 25 damage instead. But damage reduction can get a little bit wonky when you include elements. Um, basic damage reduction is physical and then resists are elemental. With elements, you can either match, be neutral, or be weak against an attack. For an example, if you have fire resistance, you, have, you are at 75% effectiveness against physical attacks, earth attacks, air attacks, and electric attacks. You're at 0% effectiveness against water attacks, and you're at 100% effectiveness against fire attacks. Damage and Rage is something that a lot of DPS use, especially with something that I'll talk about later called Team and Rage, but it is when you are hit, so I'm lumping it with tanks. It stores a percentage of the damage received to up to 25% of your HP, and then when you use it on your next skill, which you can save it, but you generally would use it on your next skill, it'll increase it by one point. Um, you can get some pretty strong skills this way as a tank. And when I talked about Team Enrage, this is what I'm talking about. It's the exact same as Damage Enrage, except that the bonus is every time your teammates get hit, not just you, but only you get the Damage Enrage. Vampirism, or if you're on the Discord, it's just called Vamp, gives you a percent chance to drain the target that hits you. 
Um, it's 45% of your power skill, and it's really useful for tanks to be able to also heal themselves while dealing out damage whenever they get hit. Patience rewards those players that just don't really spend a lot of SP by giving you damage reduction by whatever percentage for each SP you have. So if you have 4 SP in your bank and you have Patience 5, you get an extra 20% damage reduction. This pairs super well with the rune that gives you SP when you get hit. Barrier is the bane of my existence as a DPS player. I hate it so much, since as a DPS you want to hit as many times as you can, but Barrier will stop a turn in its tracks. No more pet triggers, no set triggers, no dual strike, quad strike, It's it, the turn's over. And as the person wearing barrier, if you have something that's when you get hit, that can still proc as well. It, it's so strong. Cleanse, which with the Prakuna set was paired with barrier, but otherwise is its own bonus, will remove all stacks from the target. Um, it can remove any stacks of shock, combustion, bleed, any of those things that we talked about previously in the DPS video, Cleanse can remove it and stop it in its tracks. Extort is one of the things that made Witcham so strong before it had to get nerfed, but it's at the start of any battle, it will deal 100% of your power to the closest enemy and then also gain that amount as a shield. So you deal a ton of damage and start with extra shielding. Curse is a pretty fun one. It's not quite as effective against some DPS sets where their zero SP is their bread and butter but it means that your enemies have a percentage chance to not be able to spend SP that turn. Weekend does something kind of similar. Um, it, it just reduces the enemy's team SP by X percent. So if you, for some crazy, wacky reason, had weaken 50, it would mean that when you hit them with weaken or they proc weaken, their SP is reduced by 50% of what they currently have. Fury operates the exact same as in Rage except it's a percentage instead of a one-to-one -one point, and also you cannot store it. It will be used on the next turn, unlike in Rage where you can store it. And I know I'm, I talked about luck in the DPS video as well, but it's so strong I want to talk about it here as well. It does give all random effects to be rolled twice for a favorable outcome, uh, it, so you don't need 100% block anymore because you, you're going to roll 90% twice. You don't need to stack too much evade because you get to roll it twice. Sets like Witcham combined with Clover for luck gives just insane evade because you can already hit the 75% evade. This is probably the most powerful modifier in the entire game. And finally we come to Bark Skin, which is so strong it did have to be nerfed pretty quickly after being released. It means that you, have, you cannot take more than 50% of your maximum health in a single attack, but now you'll also receive less healing. This was used with strategies that made it so you had super low health, which you could very easily recover in a single proc of a pet, and could just survive pretty much anything. But augments do go through this now, so you can die pretty easily if you're not careful. Well, that's all that I have for the defensive modifiers video. Combined with my previous video, I have talked through every modifier currently in the game as of tier 19. Which ones are your favorites? Which ones are the ones that make you cry when you see an enemy has them? Let me know down in the comments below. We can figure out the best builds that we can possibly make. Thank you again to the Bit Heroes Wiki team for their phenomenal descriptions on these modifiers. They are volunteers, and the work they do is insane and takes a ton of time. And until next time, may RNG ever be in your favor.